In this lecture, we're going to talk about how the colonists finally decide to make that clean break from Great Britain. Remember, the fighting has been going on since April the 19th, 1775. It is now the summer of 1776. The colonists have, and the Second Continental Congress have written the king with the Olive Branch Petition. The king has responded by sending 20,000 more troops to the colonies to crush the revolution. So in this lecture, we're going to talk about how you have these reluctant colonists begin to decide that it's finally time to break away from Mother England. All right, one of the most important guys in this break from England is a guy named Thomas Paine. And he writes a pamphlet called Common Sense. Here we go, Common Sense. This pamphlet does probably more to inspire people to make this break from England than any other document or any other argument that has uh, occurred so far in the colonies. All right, so the fighting has happened since 1775, and people are upset in the colonies. You know, they think that it's wrong that the king and parliament are taxing them without their consent. Uh, the intolerable acts really upsets a lot of people. But even with all these problems and all these issues that king and parliament have passed on the colonies, many people still feel loyalty to, to Great Britain, and especially to the king, especially to the king. You know, they're not ready to break away from England. They want uh, representation, and they want to be treated fairly, but they don't want to break away. Well, Thomas Paine argues that uh, we do not, we the colonists, do not owe allegiance to the king or any monarch. In fact, he argues that uh, having a king or a queen or any kind of monarchy is wrong. And he argues seven different points. Okay, and the first one is that, you know, England is an island nation. An island nation. How could an island nation set policy for an entire continent? So that's his first argument. The second argument is that he says, you know, we really aren't British anymore. We've had for the last you know, 150 years, immigrants from all over Europe, from Germany, from France, from the Netherlands, from Scandinavia, they've all immigrated into the colonies. So therefore, we really aren't British. His argument three is this, and I think this is pretty interesting. He says, if England is our mother country, then what kind of mother is it? I mean, this is a bad mom, a mother that would deprive her own children of natural rights, of... Um, their uh, representation, that uh, the king actually sends troops, uh, which, you know, again, is the mother. The mother is sending soldiers to uh, kill the colonists. I mean, what kind of mother is that? Argument number four is that, uh, you know, England is involved in way too many wars. It seems like they're in a war every other year. Just look at uh, the French and Indian War, a world war. Uh, which was called the Seven Year War. In the French and Indian War is called the Seven Year War. And they say that all England does uh, is get involved in wars. And we don't want that. I mean, think about this. If you were to um, go out in the courtyard and you're hanging around some people that are always in fights, I mean, is that a good thing? No. So you'd say, I'm not going to hang around these people anymore. England is involved in too many wars, and we don't want anything to do with that. The fifth argument... Um, is that England is too far away. You know, it, it's actually 3,000 miles away, and just that distance alone creates a prag practical problem. You know, we, we can't get communications. It's hard to, uh, to uh, you know, it's lost in translation. Policies and procedures from, uh, from a country that's 3,000 miles away just isn't practical. So that's the fifth argument. The sixth argument is that, you know, many people have come to the Americas, to the colonies, uh, for religious freedom. You know, uh, as you know, uh, we've talked a lot about religious freedom and why some of these colonies were, were founded is because of relig religious freedom. So why should we be part of a country, England, that does not have religious tolerance? And finally, the last argument that Thomas Paine makes is that it is in our best interest. It's in our best interest to separate because England is always going to look out for what's best for England, not the colonies. They're going to care more for what happens in London rather than in Boston or Philadelphia. So these are the seven arguments, and it makes a lot of sense. 
So, you know, this really starts to make people go, hey, you know, you're right. I hadn't really thought about it from these points. Uh, common sense. Um, he also argues that it's only going to hurt the colonies to remain with Great Britain. And this pamphlet convinces many of those colonists that maybe it is time. It is the right move to break away from England. Break away. But common sense didn't just inspire the common man. People in the Second Continental Congress are reading this. And it influences many of them. The most important, obviously, is a guy named Richard Henry Lee from Virginia. Because in June of 1776, he actually introduces a resolution to the Congress in favor of independence. Now, Richard Henry Lee's grandson is a very famous person in American history. And that is Robert E. Lee from Virginia which we'll talk about during the Civil War. Okay, so Richard Henry Lee makes a proposition and uh, to the Second Continental Congress, and it says, Resolve that these united colonies are, and of right, ought to be free and independent states, that they are absolved from all allegiances to the British crown, and that all political connections between them and the state of Great Britain is and ought to be totally dissolved. And I'm sure the people of the Second Continental Congress are like, Oh, no, because now that he has introduced this resolution, they have to vote for it. So when Richard Henry Lee makes his uh, proposal to the Second Continental Congress, uh, it's debated, and uh, the members of the Congress are going to vote yes or no. But you have to keep in mind, if you, vote for, if you vote yes for this resolution, then you are a traitor. You are a traitor to the people and to the king. Uh, people of Great Britain into the King of England, and treason is a capital offense. You could be hung, all right. But guess what? They vote in favor of this resolution, so the Congress appoints a committee to draw up a formal Declaration of Independence. Thomas Jefferson, of course, as most of you know, is the key member of this committee, and he writes down uh, his words in favor of independence. Uh, other people will look it over, make a few changes, and then it is finally uh, you know, read to Congress. It's voted and is accepted um, as the actual Declaration of Independence. The one that you see all the time, the, you know, the actual handwritten one, is the only one that's handwritten. They then take this document and to a printer where they make co copies of it, and uh, they send it to all the colonies to be, uh, to be read. Right, you see here a copy or a picture of the Declaration of Independence. Um, these are Thomas Jefferson's words, but this is not his handwriting. The actual guy who wrote this or printed it is a guy named Timothy Matlick, who was a, uh, I guess, a professional uh, calligrapher. I think it's amazing. Look at the borders. Look at the edges of this. I mean, if you look right here, I mean, that almost looks like uh, he used a ruler. I mean, it is fabulous. Uh, no whiteout on there. My luck, I would get down to the very end and then misspell a word and have to start over. But to me, I think it's amazing that this was all handwritten. But again, it is not. These are not the. Uh, these are the words of Thomas Jefferson, but that's not his handwriting. The other thing I think is interesting is that nowhere on there said this is the Declaration of Independence. The actual title of this document is the Unanimous Declaration of the Thirteen United States of America. Now we know it as the Declaration of Independence. But actually, there's nowhere on there that says, this is the Declaration of Independence. Now, the Declaration of Independence can be listed or broken down into four parts. And the first part is the preamble. You know, and it, it's going to uh, explain uh, to other countries why we are breaking away from Great Britain. Okay, so that's the preamble or the introduction. Uh, the next part is natural rights, you know. Um, we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. You know, so they argue that uh, government does not give people rights. Is that uh, we have these rights from birth? They're God-given rights, and governments does not uh, do not give us these rights. God gives us these rights, or we're born with these rights. And he al they also go on to say that um, government does not give us power. We the people give governments power. All right. 
And he also argues that it is uh, a, a person's right, it's a person's duty, it is a people's right and duty uh, to break away from a government if the government does not protect your natural rights. All right? So that's the first part, natural rights. The second part is the British wrongs. Um, basically, they had this whole laundry list of things that the king and parliament have done. And finally, the last one, and it unfortunately got cut off on this uh, slide, is the actual declaration that says, you know, we from now on are the United States of America. So, uh, the Declaration of Independence has four parts, the preamble, natural rights, British wrongs, and then the actual declaration. So there you have it. We have finally broken away from Great Britain. We have declared our independence. Now, just because we have declared it doesn't mean that it's so. We are going to have to fight for our independence. And it's going to be in, you know, several more years before that actually that actually happens. And the next couple of years are going to be uh, pretty dark and, and pretty uh, unsettling. It looks like, you know, the, this declaration might be only a notion. You know, we've written it down, but uh, we're going to have to fight to win this.